Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this is an update on this case. I posted this video on this case that happened about this gentleman Shadrach Alu, who unfortunately lost his life at the West Hills Mall in Accra, Ghana on the 30th of January 2023. And at a point in the video, I told you that there were two stories out there. So the video was just bringing out these theories at the point when investigations were still ongoing and I said that I believe the Ghana police are going to do a good job to the extent that by the time investigations are done we would see what the actual story is, who the suspects are and who is at fault, if any. Now guess what, the investigations have come to an end or let me say have brought some results to an extent an autopsy has been done on the body of the gentleman and the police in Ghana have issued a report explaining everything that went on in the autopsy, the findings and the cause of death as it were per the autopsy. This video is just an update to the first one I put out to share with you what has transpired so far and what the contents of this statement that the police put out indicates. So, as always, if you are ready for this ride, please just buckle up and let's go. So, this is what the Ghana Police Service said in their statement. It is captioned, Update on police investigation into the death of Shadrach Alu at the West Hills Mall. It is dated the 7th of February, 2023. And I read, they outlined it in several points. So, point one, I read. The police on 30th January 2023 started investigations into the circumstances surrounding the death of one Shadrach Alu at the West Hills Mall in Accra. Two, the police issued a press statement on the same day, which notified the public that investigations into the matter had begun. Three, the Police Professional Standards Bureau, that's the PPSB, contacted Madame Perpetual Didi, sister of the deceased, who had alleged in a viral video that her brother's death was caused by a police officer who had manhandled him at the West Hills Mall. 4. Initial investigations led to the arrest of Osei Kwame Boafo, a private security guard at the West Hills Mall who was alleged to have used a taser on the deceased during his arrest. 5. Police statements taken from witnesses at the scene of the incident, including some private security guards at the mall and the arresting police officer, revealed that the deceased had resisted arrest by the police officer who was being assisted by the private security guards. The narrative of the events as guarded by the police indicated that during the course of the arrest, the deceased pulled out a substance from his bag which he quickly swallowed before anyone could stop him. He became unconscious shortly afterwards and was taken to the Sonotech clinic for medical attention but was pronounced dead on arrival. 6. As part of the investigation process, on 3rd February 2023, the police pathologist held a meeting with interested parties in the case to explain the post-mortem examination to them. Present from the deceased side were Madame Dokas Tofi, Honorable MP for Jomoro, Mr. Kofi Amabua, Honorable MP for Elembele, Mr. Francis Xavier Kojosusu, Honorable MP for Madina, Mr. Amu Blay, and Madam Ama Kobina. Mr. Alfredo Seboafu was also presented for the accused person. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Alfredo Seboafu, sorry, was also present for the accused person, Ose Kwame Boafu. 7. At the meeting, the parties were given the option to have the postmortem examination conducted by a pathologist of their choice 
but they all agreed that the police pathologist should conduct the examination. 8. On 7th February 2023, a post-mortem examination was conducted on the deceased body in the presence of Alfred Boafo, father of the accused, Dr. Rosanna Polinisio, sorry, Sebewoso, Sebewocho, sorry if I'm getting the names not clearly, and he is the pathologist of Ga East Municipal Hospital, representing the accused, Mr. Francis Xavier Susu, lawyer for the deceased, Louis Melaba, a therefore, uncle of the deceased, Isaac Enim Ano, father of the deceased, and Anna Kobner, sister of the deceased. The pathologist gave the verbal cause of death as asphyxiation and obstruction of the airway by a foreign body. He also retrieved from the truth of the deceased eight zipped bags containing dry leaves suspected to be narcotic drugs tied in a piece of black polythene bag. The retrieved suspected narcotic substances tested positive for cannabis when submitted for forensic examination in the presence of all the interested parties. In view of the outcome of the postmortem examination, the case docket is being forwarded to the Attorney General's office for study and advice to determine further police action. We would like to put on record that from the very beginning of this incident, the police have involved all, part, all interested parties in the investigation process. It is therefore a matter of regret and great dismay, and we dare say, on Ghanaian, that people who had all the information on the matter would behave as though they had no idea of actions that were being taken by the police in respect of the case. We would like to urge the general public to exercise restraint and patience with matters that are under police investigation in order not to worsen the pain of those who are directly affected by such incidents. And it's been signed off by the Assistant Commissioner of Police, um, Police, yeah, and the Director of Public Affairs. So, there you have it. That is the results of the postmortem. And you, if you've watched the first video, you would see that it's towing the line of one of the stories that was circulating out there when the incident first broke. That the man actually took something from his bag and swallowed it. Although the other side was also trying to allude that um, he died because of how he was handled and the teasing and whatnot. But like I said, I believe the police investigations always clarify things. And like they said in the final bit of their press release, we also need to exercise restraint on the way we carry about these stories when it's under investigation so that we don't sort of you know, make the pain worse for the families who are affected by these things. The harm has already been done. As it stands now, I believe the families are looking for justice and I commend the Ghana Police Service for the way they've conducted themselves by what I'm reading here. I think that they, 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 they gave that open door and they also gave the family the chance to go in for their own pathologist to do their postmortem. So, I think that this should, in a way, bring some form of closure to the family, although it doesn't lessen the pain in any way. But I believe that the issue or the rumor or the speculations that his, uh, the deceased passed on because of how he was handled by maybe a police officer or a private security officer has now been debunked by virtue of the asphyxiation finding and the blockage of airway finding that came after the postmortem. It doesn't lessen the pain any 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 way, like I said. And I will keep saying that we wish the family the strength to move on from this. I'm not sure how the attorney general will advise, but 
we wait to see. This is still technically an ongoing case. I think they've just gotten through another aspect of the proceedings. That was the postmortem, and we are moving on from there. But let's exercise caution. Let's commiserate with the family, and let's see how things go. But kudos to the Ghana Police Service. I think even the speed with which they've acted on this and the seeming trans- transparency that they have attached to this, I think that it's commendable. We'll be following this case, we'll bring you the updates as and when they are available. But hey, like I always say, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, like the video, leave a comment, and please stay safe out there. Keep an eye out. We we'll catch you another time.